guys, Bipolar Barbie here. Now today I wanted to talk about a really important topic um, and that is our needs as people. Now we all do have really, really basic human needs um, that all of us kind of have across the board. And I think what is important to remember when we are talking about our needs is not just identifying them, but understanding that our needs are constantly changing. They are constantly evolving. Um, what we need when we are children is very different to what we need as teenagers um, and adults. And in every life stage that we go through, every experience that we have, every sort of evolution of us i always you know explain it like there's barbie 2.0 you know it's like a software update we are constantly evolving as we go through life and if you're not i think that's really sad i think when people stop growing on that level when they think they know everything when they think it have have everything figured out it's like you don't you don't have everything figured out and you never will when people say to me i know who you are it's like well i don't even know myself and if you think you know yourself, again, you are wrong because every second of every day you are changing as a person. And I think it's really important to identify um, your needs, to learn what needs are, um, because if your needs aren't being taken care of, if they aren't being met, if they aren't being fulfilled, then you are going to be unhappy. It popped up for me today and that was, I've had two comments like this this year when I talk about relationships and being single and how good it is to be single, why you need to be single. Um, and people say things like, well, people who are in relationships should be lucky because I've been single and I hate being single. My life is shit and what would make my life better is if I had someone. So the fact that I don't have someone means that I'm worse off than someone who's in a relationship, that they don't deserve to be unhappy because they have everything that, you know, they should need. And I think that's just a really crappy, really incorrect mentality. I mean, first of all, if you need a person to complete you, well, that is not a relationship. That is not a partnership. That is just dependency. And I think if, if you are gauging your worth as a person on whether or not someone else values you and is choosing to be in a relationship with you, well, I think that is a really bad starting point. You have to value yourself. You have to be happy within yourself before you can have a happy relationship. And I was thinking about that today. I've, I've done a lot of work on my needs because I think understanding my needs um, has really been the way that I can make sure that those needs are fulfilled. And when it comes to relationships, I think Borderlines in particular will have very different needs. And the reason that I broke up with my most recent boyfriend was simply because my needs changed. He needed um, sort of, you know, um, companionship. He needed attention. And what I needed was freedom. I needed to be me. I wanted to be independent. I wanted to work on, you know, building myself back up again. And our needs didn't align. And I think that happens a lot in relationships. People start to resent each other and blame each other for not being able to meet each other's needs. Um, and I guess if our needs aren't being met, we're not willing to meet someone else's needs. So it kind of just goes in this cycle that's very not productive and can be really destructive. So I was trying to communicate to this person today that was saying um, about relationships and, you know, how their life would be so much better. And there was like a really detailed thing going on there. But I thought when people say they, they need to be in a relationship, they want to be in a relationship, well, what do people actually get out of a relationship? Because if, if you can't get what you need from someone, then really you need to look at that fulfilling you need yourself. You can't take happiness from someone else and put it inside you. You can't. It's an emotion. It manifests within you. Um, and if someone isn't making you happy, well, you need to kind of focus on making yourself happy. For example, what I needed from my parents was understanding, was compassion, was space, was tolerance, was acceptance. And it's become very clear that I am never, ever going to get those things from them. So I've had to accept that. And I have had to find those needs to be met in other places. I've had to learn how to accept myself, how to have understanding, acceptance, compassion, love, all of these things that I wanted from my parents. I had to get them from somewhere else if they weren't going to give them to me. So I think understanding your needs is really vitally important.
what when people say they need a relationship like what was it all those years that really compelled me to spend the majority of my time in a relationship going from one relationship to another well what i was really searching for what i needed as a person was not a relationship it just so happened that a relationship would temporarily provide some of these things for example acceptance affection um appreciation a sense of belonging, a sense of closeness, um, a sense of, I guess, just being connected to someone, um, having compassion, showing compassion, receiving compassion, um, being considered, having someone consider me made me feel good. It fulfilled that kind of need that I had to, I don't know, Feel, feel good, I think, to feel worthy, to feel like I deserved to be loved. And as a borderline, some, those are your primal needs um, for self-worth, connection, um, sort of all those sorts of things really, really come into it. Um, I need an emotional safety as well. I think everyone does, but particularly as a borderline, you are really not emotionally stable. Um, so having some form of emotional safety um, was so important and I think what you need in life has the ability to control you so if you're needing emotional safety and you are searching for that in other people then they are going to control you with you know sort of throwing that line of emotional safety out there and kind of reeling you in like they've hooked you like a fish but imagine how incredible it would be if you could fulfill that need for emotional safety outside of a relationship if you could fulfill that need within yourself so that you wouldn't have to um, go out and, and find that in other places and be at the mercy of whether or not someone has chosen to give you those things because you can't force someone to fulfill your needs. Um, and if they don't want to, that's, that's fine. There's no point getting to the bottom of why. The fact is they, they either don't want to or they can't provide your needs. And that often happens. And I think we all just really need to accept accept that um another reason people really will get into a relationship is because they have this need for love well you know what there's many different types of love and the best type of love is actually self-love you know what i needed was i needed unconditional love i couldn't get that from my parents and i couldn't get it from anyone that i dated so if, if i need unconditional love like one i need to reassess my expectations is unconditional love achievable no, it's probably not. But the only person that can ever really love you unconditionally is yourself. That is a choice that you have to make. Um, it takes an incredible amount of effort because how can we expect someone to love us unconditionally when we put conditions on our own love, on our own sense of self-worth? You know, I will love myself when I'm in a relationship. I will love myself when I get my, you know, favorite job or that, you know, when I'm hitting the, all those career goals. When I have money, I will love myself. When when I have a house, I will love myself. When I lose weight, I will love myself. Um, all of these sorts of things, guys. I mean, how can you expect that from someone else if you can't even provide it internally? Um, other things, you know, like respect. If you need respect, again, if, if you were searching for someone to fulfill that need within you, like you need to respect yourself. That is the most powerful form of respect. You have to give respect to be able to receive it. And if you don't respect yourself, if you disrespect yourself, then you are allowing other people to disrespect you. You are setting a precedent that you're okay with being disrespected. And to change that, it really does start with yourself. Respect yourself enough to stand up for yourself, to fight for what you believe in, to treat yourself kindly, to be forgiving. And I think if you do those things, if you really focus on an inward journey, I try and take ownership for everything. And I know that that's what a lot of my psychologists really encourage me to do. In that sense, if I have an issue with someone else, even though they might be doing something that kind of needs to change, the fact is that I cannot change them, but I can change myself. So if I'm not okay with, I don't know, for example, the way that they eat breakfast, maybe that's a deal breaker for me. Who knows? 
But if I cannot stand the way that they eat breakfast, I can't sit there and just beg them, order them um, to change how they eat their breakfast. It's up to them whether or not they want to do it. And most of the time, people aren't going to change a lot of the things that they're, they're doing because they might be doing it for their own reasons. But I need to look at that and go, okay, well, how important is this? If I can't live with the way that they eat breakfast, then I need to leave. And if I have an issue with the way that they do something, then that's really an issue that I have with myself. And if I look at it that way, then I have the power to change that. Okay, well, if I don't like the way someone's doing something, then I need to change the way that I think about it. So I think that there is an incredible power with trying to fulfill your own human needs. Um, because really, you know, anything external, really, it's like trying to have an outdoor party. Like you, you don't know what the weather's going to be like. People are just as unpredictable as the weather and being at the mercy of other people is really what has destroyed me my whole entire life. And I think the only stable constant in your life is yourself. And I guess having a mental illness, that wasn't even stable. There was nothing stable or constant about my state of mind. Um, which is kind of what recovery is to me. But if I feel a need for support, there's no point begging someone that can't um, support me. It doesn't want to, whatever. Whatever the reason is that they're not supporting you, that doesn't matter. I didn't have support from my family. I didn't really have support from any friends. So I managed to find that support from doctors and therapists, from other people. You know, it, our needs are not always going to be met where we think they should be met. And I think that's why it's important to break it down into your categories because um, you will have other things like, um, you know, your physical needs, whether it be the air you breathe, food, water, um, like moving, exercising, um, rest, you know, safety, like whatever it is, whatever it is that you physically need. Um, there's a lot rather than just like physical needs, um, the same as, I guess, Probably the two most important ones for me is really that sort of relationship category and then, which I don't even want to call it like a relationship um, category, but the other one is like autonomy, which is really where I'm at right now, which are my primal needs, um, they're my priorities, which is having freedom, having choice, having my independence, um, being present with myself. Um, having space, having that freedom to do what I, what I want to do, when I want to do it, not having to answer to anyone but myself, um, being spontaneous, not feeling like I'm tied down to anything because, God, for years I was tied down to my illness. I was tied down to, you know, trying to be a good person, trying to please everyone, to my partners, to my family, to expectations, to the burdens I put on myself. And I've let go of them. And now that I am free, there is nothing I want more than to fight for those specific things. I finally have the freedom of choice back. And I'm not going to let that go. So trying to fulfill someone else's needs is not really something that I can do right now. I cannot fulfill someone's need if it doesn't co-align with my need. And there is nothing wrong with that. You do not have to feel someone's needs just as much as you can't force them to feel your needs. And I think the moment that you decide to take care of yourself, that you decide to fulfill your own needs, is the moment that you realize that the world doesn't owe you anything. If you make yourself your own number one priority, well, guess what? You are going to be someone's priority. Because if you don't, you honestly will be no one's priority. The sad truth is no one gives a shit about you. No one is looking out for you. And if you are not looking out for yourself, then you literally have no one fighting for you in your court. And I know you might not agree with that. I know you might think it's a bit brutally honest, but that's kind of the basic truth. If someone does care about you, you were really, really lucky. Um, if you have managed to find someone that can fulfill a lot of your needs, well, that's great. But please just know that maybe one day they might wake up and not be able to fulfill those needs anymore. 
And that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't want to anymore. It might just mean that they can't. And I think when you understand that, then I can let go of a lot of blame, a lot of anger, for example, that I have to my parents, where for whatever reason, they just couldn't fulfill my needs. And they're, you know, that's the way that it is. I can't control that. I literally just have to accept it. And I have to learn how to fulfill my own needs. Um, we all need some form of meaning in life, I guess, which is another kind of um, side of needs that we all really do share. We, we do all have a need to, whether it be celebrate life, to challenge ourselves, to um, have awareness, whether it be spiritually or spreading awareness, um, to feel like we are competent, to have a sense of clarity, a clearer picture of the meaning of what it means to be human. I don't know, like whatever it is that you question of who you are as a person, to feel like you're contributing, whether it be to the world at large or to your family, to your partner, to your job, um, to feel like we are growing, like we are, you know, effective people, that we are good at what we do, that we matter. There are so many different needs and so many different subcategories within these needs. And I think it's just a really important topic that we all need to very much talk about, that we need to really be aware of. And if your needs aren't met, I think we all know what happens when our needs aren't met. Relationships will break down and that is honestly where we get this internal turmoil and where someone says to me that their life would be so much better if they were in a relationship, that that would take away all the darkness and loneliness that they feel every single day. It's like that is not true. You have needs that are not being met that I can agree upon. Is a relationship going to provide those needs? Maybe, maybe not. But to rely on that relationship, to rely on that one person to fulfill your needs, no. That's your responsibility, guys. Fulfill your own goddamn needs. Like, seriously. Not because I've told you to, but because you are going to be so much better off for it. If you, if you have everything that you need as a person internally, because honestly, you can't take anything externally and put that in. You know, you can't go... Oh, if I had a new TV, I'd be happy. Well, happiness is an emotion. You can't take that TV and create happiness inside you. That's why they say material possessions, you know, don't really make you any happier. Money doesn't make you any happier. Really, even when people talk about money, if I had more money, my life would be better. Okay, well, let me hold you there for a second, guys. What would money provide you? What is the underlying need that money would fulfill? lifestyle, safety, all of these sorts of things is what money can get you. So it's not money that you need, it's safety. It's potentially a safe place to live, it's a lifestyle. And then think about that lifestyle. Well, what is the lifestyle that I wanna live? I wanna be able to go on holidays more, I wanna be able to work less and, and you know go to the beach. Whatever these things are, you know what? There's probably a lot of free free ways that you can get that lifestyle, regardless of what financial situation you're in. So if you're telling yourself that my needs are only going to be met, whether it be this one particular person, I'll only be happy when they fulfill my needs, or whether it be when I get money, when I get a relationship, you're putting conditions on your own happiness. You really are. You are basically saying to yourself, the only way that I'm going to be happy is if this happens. You are narrowing your scope to let happiness into your life. And I just think that's, that's really, really sad. So take the time. Think about all of the things that you would say you need. And then really break it down and go, okay, well, what will that give me? And then I think in that, learning how to communicate those needs to people. Imagine if we all communicated our needs, our real underlying needs to people. How much easier would it be to have relationships and communicate with people? Because a lot of the time when people, people say things like, um, you know, you need to spend more time with me. Okay, that's very aggressive. 
and someone's immediately going to be put on the back foot. But I think if we communicated that, if we really understood our underlying needs, well, the underlying need there would be, I don't feel like you care about me. I need more companionship. I need you to be more present. I need you to be more affectionate. I need to have a greater connection with you. I need reassurance from you that everything is great. You know, and then owning it. Like, I feel insecure. I feel insecure for these reasons. And I think if you see it that way, you might realize that it's not that person that actually needs to spend more time with you. That you might be able to find connection with someone else. That you might be able to find a way to reassure yourself that you are in in a safe relationship. That, you know, your partner isn't cheating on you or whatever crazy things might be going through your mind. So get to know your needs, guys. Really do it. It will change your life. And be aware of the needs of other people. And educate yourselves, I think, on... The way in which people convey needs and be mindful of the way that you convey your needs. When people try and say things to me now, I can look at it and I can go, you know what? You're telling me that you you might need this one particular thing, but what will that actually give you? And I can see what they really need underneath that. When my mother is coming around barking orders at me, I can tell what she needs is to feel important, is to be validated, is to assert her her authority, is to feel like she is worth something, like she means something. And if I look at it like that, I know that doing whatever she tells me to do is probably still not going to fulfill that need. But then I can go out of my way to be mindful and tell her that she looks pretty to tell her that she's done a good job, to ask her advice on something that I probably already know the answer to, but just to make her feel important, to make her feel good about herself so that she fulfills that need, that you can help them fulfill that need. And I know that most people go about it the wrong way. They demand for their needs to be fulfilled and You can't force anyone to fulfill your needs. You really can't, guys. It's late. It's like 4 a.m. So I'm sorry if this video doesn't make any sense. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And maybe I'll think about it some more. But I don't really think my videos through that much. So anyway, guys, um, give it a thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out some of my other videos. And let me know what you think about need.